Okay, before we start cooking the food and things, I just want to talk about the oven and the table and bits. The oven itself is a 90 centimeter oven with a 70 centimeter internal measurement. The oven is built out of refractory brick, which is then rendered with a fire cement and then insulated with a fiber ceramic blanket or some kind of rock wool insulation, then rendered again on top. This is all built on top of an independently insulated base, which is how I'm able to put it onto the railway sleepers. The oven does have a galvanized steel door, which is 14 inches wide by 13 inches height. These ovens do come in other sizes, and these sizes are 70 centimeters, 80 centimeters, 90 centimeters, 100 centimeters, 110 centimeters, and 120 centimeters. These ovens do come in many different colors and all kinds of different finishes. However, if you do pick the slate finishes on the external skin and things like that, the price will go up significantly. Okay, so in regards to the oven installation, the oven itself weighs almost 500 kilos, which is very heavy indeed to get a coat on an IHAB. Uh, but the people never got back to me. I even priced up a tracked crane mini lift uh, Which would fit through a doorway. I did get a price on this. It was like a thousand pounds just for the deposit Two ton engine lifts. Unfortunately, they wouldn't hire it to me because it wouldn't get the height that I required In the end, I was able to get a beam lifter which is designed to hold RSJs into place the pizza oven arrived in a couple of days on a pallet. The pallet was too wide to get into the garden initially, but I had to remove the rest of the gate frame to get it through. Once we got it into the garden, we had to get it over 7 metres of gravel to be able to get it close to the table. And even though the beam lifter could lift 600 kilos, we still had to lift the oven up in stages. So we had to lift it up, block it underneath it, adjust the straps, lift it up again, put more blocks underneath it, adjust the straps again and so on and so on until we actually got it on top of the table. It wasn't easy to do but it's probably one of the best things I've bought myself in years. Okay we're going to take a quick look at the table build. I went through a few ideas in regards to the table build. I went through the idea of brick uh, which is the standard. One of the ideas was actually building out a scaffolding. So I got a bit of paper, drew out where I want the bars and where I want the tabletop and which side I want the oven on. It changed over time, it was going to have wood boards on the top, it's going to be supported by the wall, have extra beams, all that kind of stuff. So in the end I decided to use railway sleepers. The railway sleepers themselves are 20 centimeters wide by 10 centimeters thick and they are 240 centimeters in length which is just under two and a half meters. So I worked out all my sizes, so I decided I need 11 lengths and just to be sure I made this cardboard cut out. Put it all together, um, seeing what I needed for the heights and the widths and things and how many cuts. Now to fix all this wood together, I went and bought some Timco Index Timber Screws which are painted with corrosion resistant plating for uh, this kind of external application. So I bought some that were a foot long which was 12 inches and I have some that are 6 inches long as well. The 6 inch long ones we used where it was only 10 centimeters thick so I sort of countersunk them into the wood and the big 12 inch long ones we used for all the sides so I kind of staggered them three on one, four on another so there's no movement there at all. So the table was made in two parts. The first part was just the main body for the oven to sit on and the second part was made as a tabletop to go on top of the table. I've actually got the top part that slides into the main body so the oven sits on top of it as well. So it slots into the gap and gives a nice flat surface. Okay so when I put the wood into the oven I like to start it with a medium sized amount of wood. Some people just like to pile the wood in there and set fire to it and, and let it go. I like to build mine up after it's lit. The reason why I do this is I like to think it'll help my oven last longer in the long term of its life. If you heat it up too quickly you're going to risk splitting it which could be some serious long term damage. So I made my pizza bases 24 hours prior to actually cooking them. This gives the yeast plenty of time to feed basically and put all the air inside the bread. 
makes it nice, crispy and light. The tomato sauce I made using Samazano tomatoes with a bit of garlic, a bit of rapeseed oil, tomato puree, a couple of grams of salt and dried basil. Then blitzed it through a food processor to make it nice and smooth. Yeah, I still need to work on my pizza making skills, getting the shape right, make sure I've got all the correct ingredients, this, that and the other. And it's still new to me, so it, they may not be round, but the texture and the flavour is spot on. You sit there in the garden in the sunshine, you're cooking pizza and your family's around you and the kids are running around the garden like lunatics and you sit back, glass of wine. Yeah, good times. And when we've had people around, they get involved, they make their own pizzas, they use the oven, which is new to them as well. People often ask, why did you get this and not a barbecue or a pit smoker or something like that? This oven does it all. You can cook anything you like in there. It's just as good as your typical oven. It's just a different way of using heat. You could probably even make cake and things in there without an issue. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, it's not my usual content, but it's something else I enjoy doing and I like to share things I like. So let me know what you think. If you'd like to see more of this kind of stuff, just let me know and uh, when the nice weather comes out, we'll get cracking.